The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 18th. Traders Ed Show. Uh, I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and uh, uh, skipping the normal open, recovering from a flu type of uh, bug. So I just don't have the energy in the uh, lungs to push out the normal open. But uh, we'll try to make it through this hour out here. I would uh, love to hear from you. You can always give us a call at 877 927 6648. If you can't uh, give me a call, um, then uh, go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, like Alan did earlier. And uh, in the in the subject heading, if you'd put radio show question, it'll make it much easier for me to see that it's an email regarding the show, and I'll be able to get to that. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den, as Jose did earlier, you know, just uh, go ahead and ping me private or otherwise out there, and we'll go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and get to the market here. This is, again, December 18th, terrific Tuesday. Um, of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Right now, the Dow trading up 307 points. S&P's up 22, so the Dow's up one and three tenths percent. Um, the semis are the ones leading the charge to the upside, so we'll take a look at that. They're up two and a half percent, or 28 bucks. Trainees are up uh, over one percent as well, so everything looks pretty good. Spot volatility index is up as well. It's trading out at 24.87. So uh, maybe that's just the uncertainty ahead of uh, tomorrow's Fed meeting. Maybe it's what's going on over in Europe, Brexit or not. Maybe it's uh, a whole list of, uh, maybe it's the mere fact that uh, prices yesterday were testing the uh, February lows at the bottom of the consolidation. Um, inside the Dow, certainly that same swing point inside the S&P 500. Um, who knows? Uh, but uh, right now you've got gold up 80 cents, silver up one penny, lights we crude. Uh, the uh, Khashoggi put, that's a trade trading down two and a half bucks, trade out of 47.38 out there. Very tough to trade uh, light sweet crude from a technical standpoint when there's something fundamental behind the move behind it. It has nothing to do with the slowing economy or something along those lines. Of course, those are my thoughts. Uh, that's just really proven out by when gold, or gold, when light sweet crude began trading lower out there. It's really not that complicated. Now, you've got bonds, so you've got uh, moves, so you've got the markets up and bonds up. What does that say to you? What it should say to you is that the U.S. is the safe haven. The U.S. is the safe haven out here. Yeah, if you're sitting over in uh, the U.K. wondering what May is or isn't going to be able to get <clears throat> through Parliament there uh, and the mess that they have, let alone what's going on over in Germany, Italy, you name it, France, uh, you know, you name it. Where are you going to go ahead and park your money? Where are you going to park your money if you're sitting over there? Are you going to go park it in the euro? Are you going to try to park it in the U.S. dollar? Well, buying U.S. bonds, um, that's one way to park it into the uh, dollar. So it, it just tells you and I that this is still the game in town right here. Yes, the market is pulled back, but this is still the game in town. It's going to be that way for some time to come. Now, leading the charge to the upside right now, uh, dollar-wise, you've got booking holdings up 56 bucks. Amazon's up 45 Those are up 3% today. Uh, Google is up uh, 3%. Boeing is up uh, 5%. Netflix is up about 5%. So there's some big movers out there. To the downside, Biogen, that's down 18 bucks or 6%. Uh, Fact set research down 10, nearly 5%. So there's movers and shakers to the uh, downside. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the first questions that have come in, then we'll come back to the markets. If you take time to write in, ping me or whatever, call in. We want to go to those uh, first out here. So Alan writes in, and Alan says, hi, Steve. <clears throat> Nugget really popped to the upside here. So if we take a look at Nugget, we'll see exactly what Alan uh, was talking about, at least at the time that the email was sent in. Uh, right now, this is trading up at uh, 1749. And seven, oops, didn't mean to do that. 1749 is uh, <clears throat> taking it really above a couple of things. We'll go ahead and read his email, but let's let's just go ahead and decorate this chart out here by putting in a normal resistance level. That was this downdraft here in the trading day of August 15th. <clears throat> Today is the first day 
and then we can see a possible close above that. So therefore, old resistance, Alan, could become new support. Now, we know there was resistance because this level was tested back on October 15th, the 16th, the 18th, the 19th, the uh, 23rd out there. When price couldn't bust it up, price went ahead and pulled back. So today could be really the nugget, N-U-G-T, that's the 3X for the uh, gold miners out there, or the, the miners out there, I should say. Um, yeah, it is the gold miners, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is taking out uh, an area of resistance. Now, it's also taking out the swing point from the trading day of October 23rd. Now, that had 12 million shares, Alan, only about 7 million shares at 111. So it doesn't seem like it has the volume necessarily behind the move, meaning it doesn't have more than 12 million shares. That doesn't mean it's dead or anything. It's just you, your preference would be to see it take that level out which, by the way, that's 1715, and do that with more than uh, 13 million shares. But let's finish reading Alan's question, because he might not have really cared about any of that stuff. But uh, do you think this is anticipation of the Fed tomorrow? Oh, um, okay. Well, that's hard for me to say. Um, what I can share with you, and I went ahead and I grabbed this chart before I logged in, <clears throat> isn't the real question is the move in the mining equity sustainable? Uh, hey, it's outperforming because the question was, hey, gold wasn't doing much. Remember, we took a look at gold and what it was doing here. We said it was up uh, a buck. I was up 80 cents earlier. So you can't say that the mining equities are outpacing gold. So what's the real meaning behind that? So that I can answer for you better than I can. Is this an anticipation of what the Fed might do? And it goes like this. If we take a look at uh, gold and we compare it to, <clears throat> excuse me, we compare it to the HUI, the, the, the Gold Bugs Index, or we compare it to the XAU, the Philadelphia silver gold and silver index out here um and when i when i mean compare it i want to understand what the rate of change has been in essence since the bottom and when i say the bottom so on this chart here on the very right hand side you're going to see this little kind of rectangle it's got the instruments so you're going to see gold is in there you're going to see the hui you're going to see the xa you're going to see the open low high close you're going to see on my system something that says bar index and bar number. And this allows me to come back to the trading day of August 16th, when gold, that's a top panel on my chart, made a low. That was 86 days ago. But if I take a look at, uh, because it was the futures contract, if I take a look at where we're at on that same day with regard to the mining equities, it was 85 days ago. So all I have to do is come and change, and, and change my rate of change tool to 85 days. And that's what I've done. So I've got actually 85 days here for gold. And you can see that happens to be this top panel. It's up 5.8%. Since that, uh, since that trading day. Whereas when you take a look at the HUI and the XAU, they're up 15% and 10% respectively. So that's a positive sign, Alan, because when gold mining equities, when the mining equities have a real move behind them, you will see them outperform the rate of change of gold. So right now it's only two to one. The strongest moves are like three, four, and five to one out there. But we'll take two to one at this stage of the game. So whether or not the uh, nugget holds the highs that we just took a look at here, um, even on light volume, maybe it comes back and it retests 1650 or, or not. At this stage here, I don't think this has anything necessarily to do with tomorrow. This is just the mining equities outperforming gold, which is what you would see when you're in a bullish trend for both. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. <clears throat> The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Jose wanted to uh, see what the TAS market profiles were for the equity futures contracts. And so what we're looking at on our screen are the ES in the uh, very left-hand side, the NQ, the Dow, YM, and the Russell 2000. And so, Jose, the if you take a look at the uh, data boxes, uh, you're going to see uh, data information that is in blue and that which is in green. And so the blue numbers represent, I know you guys in the den can take a snapshot of this. Uh, you have the uh, top center and the uh, bottom. The blue are the dailies, the green are the weeklies. I don't have the weeklies turned on for the ES Mini. They're up so high that it doesn't, it's kind of irrelevant. Probably should turn them off, quite frankly, for the uh, Russell and even for the uh, Dow at this stage of the game out here. Um, but there's your, there's your profiles. For the uh, daily time frame, you also wanted to know what Stevie's red lines were for the same instrument. So I'll go ahead and put this tool out here. And here you've got the same four equity futures contract. You'll see a column that shows uh, five hour and then the uh, daily OUL oscillator and change line. That's really what Stevie's red line is. And so you'll just want those numbers 2618 or 19 as an example for the S. Yes. 66.30 for the NQ, the Dow is 24.309, I would use 14.25 for the uh, Russell, and uh, prices below the daily on each of those, but it is uh, prices above for the NQ and the Dow, uh, slightly above. Uh, prices is about 10 points above in the NQ and 884, about 40 points inside the Dow Equities futures contracts out there. Now, the reason why Jose or anybody would want to know those numbers in Stevie's red line is that um, a bullish trend, whether it's counter trend or otherwise, uh, is typically going to be trading above that resistance level out there. Uh, of course, you'd want to certainly take a look at where the resistance levels, and we're talking resistance right now, the support 
would be if price was above the uh, oscillator and change line, which we took a look at. Uh, but then, so when there's, where's the next resistance? For example, so the NQ is trading above the uh, daily steepy red line, 66.29, we're at 66.54. So if I were to ask you where's the next resistance level from a daily perspective, your answer is going to be the bottom of the daily profile, 67.83. So if you're wondering, <clears throat> was yesterday a bottom or just a counter trend rally move, where could price take us up to? Well, inside the NQ, the answer is 67.82. Likewise, in the ES mini, now price is still trading below Stevie's red line. So first, that needs to clear 26. 19 you're 20 it was 20 yeah 26 19 uh 26 19 shoot <clears throat> 26 19 would actually take you above the bottom of that daily profile so where is it that the ds mini is going to bounce to right now we have to go with stevie's red line out there the dow as an example it's trading above stevie's red line at 23 847 here, 23,885. So, therefore, the Dow could easily, not saying it's going to, but it could easily bounce up to its next resistance level. That's 24,459. So, I hope that helps you out with regard to the information that uh, you were looking for. <clears throat> Let's go to a couple other questions here that have come in. Uh, Nick writes in and says, uh, Can we take a look at the Dow at a daily 60 minute and five minute uh, view? So, Nick, we can. Excuse me while I grab some water there. So when you say the Dow, and especially when you start to go to 60-minute charts out here, um, <clears throat> I hope what you're really talking about is the Dow equity futures contract versus the Dow cash indice out here. And, and the reason that I'll say that is I have found trying to go to a 60-minute chart is is useless for I understand maybe doing an intraday for individual equities, but, um, you know, you're using six hours versus 23 plus hours uh, inside using the Dow Equity Futures contract where you're really looking for price discovery out there. So my preference for you uh, would be to say, and especially and you can talk about 60 minutes as an example, for the Dow, you're better off at least breaking into 30 minute segments. So that way you have what would you have? You'd have six times two, 12. You'd have 13 minute equal time frames to at least try to gauge what price might be doing. But what I think would be better for you as an example would be to, and you don't have to trade the equity futures, but I'd rather you at least get the price discovery information. So if you want a 60 minute chart as an example for the Dow, <clears throat> here what you would know, and you would not see this for the Dow cash indice. What you would see on this chart as an example, Nick, is you would see yesterday at four o'clock, Price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy. What you would then also know is as the contract was closing on a 60-minute basis, it had enough energy to create a bullish engulfing candle. Now, that was a signal that price was going to at least jump up to Stevie's red line, which it did as it reopened <clears throat> at, uh, at 6 o'clock. So it did that, uh, found resistance there, uh, and then it was dealing with its uh, TAS market profiles. Now, if you're wondering, why did the Dow make a move this morning and stop at about 11 o'clock? Why did it do that? Why, did it, why is that the high of the day out there? And the answer is, and it works this way for all time frames and all instruments, but when I say all time frames and all instruments, that's really a misnomer, isn't it? Is misnomer the right word? Eh, it's the word I use. It's the word I selected. The misnomer is... Then all of a sudden, somebody would say, well, shoot, you could do that for the Dow cash indice. No, you can't. It, you won't be able to get this Tom DeMarc setup out here. But so, so Nick, if you were trading the Dow and you were trading on a one-hour basis and you would want to know that there was a Tom DeMarc setup nine count that took place at 11 o'clock this morning. Why? Because one of three things are going to happen at that stage, uh, typically. One, you're going to have some type of hiccup. That could just be a sideways move for a short period of time. Two could be a change in trend. Yeah, change in trend. Now, change, change in trend says you've got to go try to identify support. Well, here on a 60-minute time frame, we've got our TAS market profiles. We know they're bullish in structure, so 23,775 should have been support. And the red line was just slightly underneath that level. It was at about 23,730, uh, give or take. Now what price is doing is just trading in this consolidation. Consolidation is between the bottom and the top of the box. This box happens to be bullish in structure. That just means that buyers 
with inside this box should have had enough energy to push price up to the top of it. Doesn't mean bullish in structure. Okay, it's bullish and we're going to go break through the top. No, no, no. That's not what it means. It's just telling you who's got the energy with inside the price level of, in essence, 23,949 at the high and 23,775 at the low out there. And price basically has gotten up there. It's missed it by a few points, but not by many points. And so price is just trading sideways out here. So, Nick, and hopefully it was the equity futures contract that you were looking for, because this is where you're going to get the most amount of information. If I put the, the Dow, you're just simply not going to get it. You know, if you wanted to see this on a five-minute view, which you said you did, um, let's change that for you. We can change this to a, a five-minute view out here. Um, now, my oscillator and change line out here is going to stay at the 60-minute time frame. And I'm just going to leave it like that versus going ahead and changing it. Hopefully, that is okay with you. You're not here to say yes or no, so it's going to have to be. Of course, you're not going to see much as a straight line because you know now I've got a five-minute time frame. Um, uh, let me try to squeeze this a little bit here. Well, that was an extra squeeze. We didn't want to squeeze it that much. And uh, so there's a lot of recalculation going on here because I've got multiple time frame instruments working out. So on, a, on the five-hour time frame... Um, all I can say at this stage here is you're trading below the bottom of profile. And this would say to me that the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract could easily pull back to 23,765. That's his Tom DeMarc setup trend line. Hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I'll be right back. <clears throat> I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the next question, there's a couple of questions. We've got a couple in the den, which we'll get to um, uh, right after this one. This was sent in by Greg M. And uh, Greg is writing in on the uh, stock uh, Agnico Eagle. AEM is the ticker symbol. So uh, Greg has, uh, an, he was looking at an A to B equals CD. That looks and is A to B equals CD pattern. There's multiple A to B equals CD patterns with inside of Ignico Eagle. Uh, Greg was taking a look at the one that began on November 13th. That's your A point. The B point, November 21st, and a pullback here to November 30th. And his question was, hey, it looks like this hit the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD, which is correct. We can see that price projection at 4068 if we use that one. So, so what's the probability that it consolidates here and then does another A to B equals CD up or is it more likely to pull back before doing another A to B equals CD? I think maybe your question you were asking, uh, how likely is it to continue on to the next level? Um, because in order to have an A, B equals C, D, you've got to have a retracement, right? So that's just one. And yes, it's done a 1.618. Now, if I remove that out here, what you're also going to see, Greg, is that prices run into resistance from a daily basis, which is the top of the profile. Uh, so 40.56 is a key level that you want to see price close over. If it doesn't close over that, then the so-called consolidation area, at least at this stage here that you would be looking at, would be from the top at 40.56, top of the box, versus the bottom of the box, 37.96. That would be your consolidation area. But if I were going to write in uh, or, or display an A to B equals CD pattern, my eyes immediately went to the larger one. The larger one started at the bottom on September 7th, and then I used the high October 25th, and then I pulled back here to November 13th. Now, both are correct, just so we know, right? In this case here, Greg, my interpretation is this has more room to run to the upside. Why? <clears throat> well, first of all, when I take a look at where price is trading on the C to D angle, because I maintain the exact same angle along A to B as the C to D move. This is on the strong side. I mean, it's on the left side of that C to D leg. So this would say to me, this is going to go to the 1.272, maybe the 1.68 expansion of the larger pattern that is out there. So this looks like it's got 4209 or 4444 written all over it. Uh, so hopefully this helps to answer your question. Your question was, what's this likely to do? We don't know until it takes out 4056, but until it does that, then any types of pullback with inside this box are valid, not a big deal. Uh, 3796. Now, 3796, it still is above your entry out there. So the question becomes, you know, how tied are you to this? Is this a longer term trade? If we take a look at the um, <clears throat> weekly time frame chart out here, the weekly time frame chart, the only thing, one bullish wise, we can say, okay, price is above the top of the box. No real pattern out there, so to speak, other than just simply do a retracement. A retracement from a previous high. That's from the week of um, July 2nd, down to the low out here of September 3rd. And this says, hey, it's on its way to the 0.618 area. So 41.85 pretty much should be your next stop as long as price can clear the top of that profile out there. And there's no reason to believe it won't make it up to the 44.48 level as well. So that's what I see when I take a look at Agnico Eagle at this moment. And uh, you just really like to see it stay above the high from the week of October 22nd. That's 39 bucks, even Steven out there. And the reason you want to see it stay above that is that had volume in it. <clears throat> that was on the way down and up. So it was both. And you'd like to see that resistance level hold the support. So, Greg, thanks for writing in. I hope, whoops, what did I do? Oh, there we go. I hope that helps you out with regard to AEM. Now, there are a couple questions in the uh, den. One was if I could discuss liquidity. What do I think? What were my comments about liquidity in the marketplace? So <clears throat> here's here's my uh, my response with regard to liquidity. There's a, several different tools that you and I can gauge the liquidity inside the marketplace. <clears throat> One of those tools is um, is taking a look at the relationship between asking yourself the question, what are buyers and sellers doing with high-grade uh, bonds out here? In this case here, we're going to take a look at the high-yield corporate bond ETF, HYG. So I've selected something that you can do on your own as well. 
And here, what this chart is doing is this is comparing the spies. So you've got that. So you can put the spy chart up, and then you can put the HYG chart up. Now, <coughs> excuse me. What's nice for for my tool here, this correlation tool, that's the bottom portion of the screen, is this automatically goes out and it takes a look at the directional correlation between the spies and high yield corporate debt. And if there's a direct correlation, this is on an average of five days out here. That's what my setting is. If there's a direct correlation for that average, then the bar is above zero. And you can see most of these bars for that five day time period are above zero. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at, you've got a bounce going on inside the spies, but with regard to the HYG, this thing has made a lower low today. So if you're gonna ask me to use this gauge, now you can't just use this as a timing tool. I was asked to comment about liquidity, but knowing that there's a directional correlation here, if the S&P, as an example, is gonna find its legs and put in some type of bottom, well, it goes to say that so too should high yield corporate bond, the high yield corporate bond ETF out here. And we don't see that as we speak right now. So that we put that in the check mark box of uh, uh, liquidity, sucks right we can if we have you know great or what, how, whatever you want to go ahead and put it on. i think sucks is a technical term with regard to eh, not so good out there <clears throat> so that's one tool that we can use what's another tool well another tool that we can use is just taking a look at advanced decline data or taking a look at the advanced decline oscillator which is the uh, bottom panel of my screen out here uh, bottom panel i apologize panel number two Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline data, which is up off the lows yesterday. The lows were well below minus 150. Right now you're at minus 146, telling you that you are very oversold. So now we're looking at daily data here. And when the advanced decline oscillator reading is below zero, it also tells you that liquidity is somewhat suspect. Above zero says buyers are in control. Below zero, sellers are in control. It's really always about liquidity anyways, isn't it? There's plenty of liquidity. There's plenty to party. There's, uh, you know, everybody's buying, so to speak. Think of, think of walking into a bar, and you walk into the bar, and everybody's given a grand just as you enter in cash that has to be spent. Everybody in the bar, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is the type of bar you want to go to, by the way. Of course, that's called open bar, right? <clears throat> you drink more at an open bar than you do at a closed bar? Some people do. An open bar, you got plenty of liquidity. So somebody gives you a thousand bucks, everybody's buying. That's really what we mean by liquidity. And if everybody's buying, you know, it's it's things are in essence going up out there. So that's this is the same kind of thing with regard to uh, liquidity out here. Here we can see eh, we're not getting any cash by walking into this bar. When we take a look at advanced decline oscillator data out here. What's another thing that we can take a look at? Well, we can also look at where is the um, spot volatility index traded in relationship to its 50 day. That's the bottom panel out here. And you can see that the uh, bottom panel shows the 50 day is at 1973, where the spot fix is at 2516. This is also not a positive sign for liquidity. Doesn't mean the market may not have bottomed. But if you're asking me what's this say about liquidity, hey, you're buying. That's what it says. <clears throat> Although right now I'm not drinking. Steve Rhodes with TFN and other than H2O. We'll be right back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, <clears throat> folks. You know, we were talking about liquidity just before we went to the break. There's one last tool that uh, can be used to gauge liquidity. And this one each of you can uh, easily get access to just by test driving the uh, TAS uh, market profile scanner system. This is one of the tools available in the scanner. And here we can take a look at the NASDAQ. So this is going to be able to give you liquidity for the ETFs with inside the S&P 500 or the S&P 500 itself or the NASDAQ 100. And that's what I've got up on my screen right now. Now I've got, it, it allows you to, to, to really get the liquidity gauge, so to speak, for four different time frames: One hour, which is up on my screen, the four hour, the daily, and the week. Weekly. If we take a look at what's going on in the short-term time frame, what you're going to see here is, and, and over on the left-hand side, you'll we, we use this tool here to um, to gauge liquidity or market breadth is another way to, uh, uh, but I think the, the words are interchangeable or I'm going to interchange them. Here you've got 33 issues trading above the top of their box and 37 below the bottom. So when you are trading above the top of box, it's above resistance. So positive, good market breadth. Um, good liquidity <clears throat> below the bottom of box, 37 here. Poor market breadth, poor liquidity out here. So it's at these crossovers where you can see uh, changes in trend uh, begin. Now, they're going to begin typically on a 60-minute basis. Before the, and so right now we're kind of even, Stephen. Slightly, you can see it's been really uh, moving back and forth all day today. Since 9 o'clock this morning, this gauge has been moving back and forth out here if you go to a larger time frame four, four hours not moving back and forth the four hour time four hour time frame on december the 14th the 13th went to a, a negative or a bearish cross out here with regard to liquidity and then just go take a look at what the uh, stock market or the end the x100 has done since september uh, S september december the uh, 13th out here here if you take a look at the daily time frame it's been in this it's been this gauge since December 6th. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame since the week of December 8th out there. So this is another liquidity tool. But as we take a look at the one-hour time frame for here, it's really just a coin toss, uh, if you ask me, as of 1.44 in the afternoon. So hopefully that covers liquidity and ways to take a uh, look at it, or at least to be able to assist you in your trading and your investing. Coda had written in and asked... <clears throat> The question, good question. How good is the DeMarc signal? Um, and, you know, could could I please uh, ask? I could I please ask. Could I please discuss it? So 
what here's the the answer, Coda is what I like about the Tom DeMarc signal is it is just simply another indicator. You got to think of it as an indicator, and some indicators are going to work better for different instruments and different time frames. And what I like about it is having this tool automated allows me to pull up a chart, put that tool on it, and see if it's had any meaning. Because it's really not, uh, you know, how has this worked for me, let's say specifically, it's how is this working on the chart? And it is something to be aware of. So Coda, let's say for example, you trade the S&P 500. And in this case here, I've got the ES Mini up on my screen. So you trade it and you say, when I get to, or when it gets to uh, bar number eight, I'm gonna start paying attention. I'm gonna use this indicator as well as anything else that I've got to help me identify what's going on inside the market. Well, the first thing that you do is actually, if you just popped it on the screen, is you just go look for those Tom DeMarc set up nine counts and say, has this had any meaning in the chart? Has it been able to provide you with uh, possible turn points out here? And if the answer is yes, then for that specific instrument and that specific time frame, you say, aha, I've noted it and I want to pay attention to it. It is not the be all to end all out there, but as a tool, it is a great and it is a fabulous tool out here. So inside the ES Mini, we can see that on the trading day of July 27th, you had a Tom DeMarc set up nine count out here. And remember, we said when you have these, you get pretty much three outcomes you've got but what's nice about this is typically what you're I'd say typically not always but typically what you're going to see is one of those three a hiccup a change in trend or it could be just a continuation in that trend uh, and when it when you get a continuation it tells you it's a really strong move to the upside or downside out here but here we can see we had that little hiccup we had a pullback into a level of uh, of support out here um, that's that green dash line on my uh, screen out here. Uh, this again was on the trading day code of July 27th. Here, and, and remember that the top or bottom usually occurs the day of, the day before, or the day after. And here on August 28th, uh, it was the day after that marked the high. Uh, and then we saw a bit of a pullback. So that's something that I think we would not have ordinarily seen had we not been using that Tom DeMarc setup. When we take a look at the actual high that took place inside the S&P via the ES Mini, that took place on a Tom DeMarc setup nine count. That was on September 21st. When we had a, a move to the downside and then we had its first counter trend rally, we know that because we're looking at the left-hand side of the chart out here. Well, on the trading session of November 9th, that was a Tom DeMarc setup nine count. It was the day earlier that marked the high. Then there was quite a pullback out here. So I don't know. You tell me, and I'm not just cherry picking this chart at all. Um, you tell me, do these Tom DeMarc setups, and this isn't showing the sequential or the combo counts. I've just made this easy just because this is so easy for you to be able to do at home for an instrument that you track because all you're looking at is the candles close and comparing it to the close of the four of the uh, the close of the bar four bars earlier. Oh, I know it's tough to say, but if you can if you can get what I'm saying, you just go back four bars and see where the close is. If the current bars close that you're monitoring is above, well, then what you've got is maybe count number one and then two and three and four and five. And you can do it on your system out here. So as an example, <clears throat> the question is, has the market bottom, right? Isn't that a question? Because, and why would that be a question? Well, one of the reasons that that should be a question to you is because uh, the market, the S&P specifically here, well, that's the 60 minute, what the heck? No wonder my system is so slow. Let's go over the daily time frame. What is it that you and I know? We know, well, here, let's do this. Let's do the SPY. Let's take the SPY out here. Now, the SPY is going to show that price didn't get back and test the low from February 9th. You know that you're going to take a look at the index because the index is clean. We're not dealing with dividends and so forth. And so we know that that level was tested. Yes, the SPY didn't get down there. That's because it's got, you know, other junk inside it so that it's not exactly the same. The volume that it was testing was the volume was, uh, what was it? Uh, I'm sorry, I got to turn my volume on here. Um, the volume on the 9th was uh, 283 million shares. And yesterday's test was with 165 million shares. I don't know what the math is on that. 30, 40% lighter in volume out here. So you have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. If you've 
learned anything about the art of timing the trade, you know, all right, this may be where you see a bottom form out here. Maybe. Okay? Because it doesn't have enough energy to bust through out here. So then what else should we be looking at um, for some type of uh, signal in the marketplace? Well, one of the things we can do is we can start looking at, at other instruments that have a significant impact on the market. Well, if I ask you what's the one instrument comes to your mind, I'm just going to throw this out there, what in one instrument do you think has an impact on the direction of the market more than anything else? What do you think that is? What is that for you? Do you have an instrument like that? What would that be? I come back from the rig. I'll try to read your minds, and then we'll go take a look at what that instrument might be telling you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, as we do the two-minute wrap-up here. So the, the one stock, and I know there's a couple of you out there, said, yeah, Apple, right? So Apple is one of those stocks that can impact the direction of the uh, market out here. Well, if we take a look at, and we were talking about the Tom DeMarc set up nine counts out here. And if we take a look at when the most recent high was formed, uh, it was on September 7th is when we got the Tom DeMarc set up. Now, that high was pierced and it was tested. It was what the Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Indicator top out there. But a really good indication code, at least I think. I don't know about what you think, but a really good indication. That's a weekly chart that you and I are looking at. And, and the reason that we're picking up the weekly time frame chart here is because a weekly is going to have more impact, more meaning, or should, than a daily time frame. 
So take a look at where we're at now. We're in a potential this week being a Tom DeMarc set up nine count out here. So I ask you, Coda, is this worth noting and paying attention to? Now, we don't know if we're going to be there because this is not Friday. Well, nine minus four is five. So what we know is that in order to get that nine count, there needs to be a close below the low of that bar from the week of November 23rd out there. That price point, by the way, is set uh, 172.29. So as long as Apple this week closed below 172.29, you're going to have your Tom DeMarc set up nine count out there. So maybe, just maybe, it's something to think about. And again, I'm not cherry picking instruments or anything. Somebody might say, well, uh, hey, what about bonds? Berry bonds. No. Ooh, that hurt the throat. Take a look at treasury bonds. When we got that Tom DeMarc set up nine count out there, just so you know, Coda, I went to uh, short, short or neutral. I can't remember on that day. And then price pulled back here and tested the bottom of the box. And I reversed to long a couple of days ago. Now I've got a decision to make because price is testing the top of that box out there. I don't know if that's it, but I know it's trading right into resistance out there. So there's your Tom DeMarc set up nine counts. You decide whether or not they uh, work. Test it out on your favorite instruments out there. Folks, thanks so much for being here. I'll do my best to be with you tomorrow. Stay tuned. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Have a terrific Tuesday. <clears throat>Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com.